going to take a look at some example problems from the IXL geometry module R.1, which uses the sine, cosine, and tangent functions to solve right triangles. Linked in the description below, you can find a PDF of the questions we're looking at in this video, along with the exact value reference card found further on in the video. Let's get started. This first question asks us to find the sine of angle E and state our answer in simplified fraction form, so not a decimal approximation. The sine of an angle is the ratio between the side opposite that angle and the hypotenuse of the right triangle. For angle E, that will be 35 over 37. Since that fraction doesn't simplify any further, that will be our final answer. The second question asks us to find the cosine of angle S. Once again, our answer should be given in simplest fraction form. The cosine of an angle is the ratio between the side adjacent to that angle and the hypotenuse of the right triangle. For angle S, that will be 10 over 26. This fraction will simplify down to 5 thirteenths. 5 thirteenths will be our final answer. The next one asks for the sine of angle I. Again, the sine of an angle is the ratio between the side opposite that angle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. For angle I, that's going to be 6 over the square root of 61. Now, we need to simplify this a little bit further because IXL asks specifically for a fraction in rationalized form. That means no radical in the denominator. To rationalize the denominator, we'll multiply the fraction by 1 in disguise. That is, the square root of 61 divided by the square root of 61. Multiplying across the numerator, I have 6 times the square root of 61. In the denominator, I've got the square root of 61 squared, which simplifies to just 61. Now, this fraction definitely is a little bit gnarly, but it is in simplest form. Our final answer will be 6 times the square root of 61, all divided by 61. Let's look at another. We're finding the cosine of angle Z. Well, cosine will be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. That will be 2 times the square root of 5, all divided by 2 times the square root of 7. We can simplify this just a little bit. The non-radical factors 2 over 2 simplify to just 1. That leaves the square root of 5 over the square root of 7. Again, while this isn't mathematically wrong, the answer is still not in simplest form. We'll need to rationalize the denominator here. Again, we're going to multiply by 1 creatively. This time it'll be the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 7. Up in the numerator, I can multiply the radicands. That'll be the square root of 5 times 7 or the square root of 35. In the denominator, I have the square root of 7 times the square root of 7. That makes the square root of 7 squared or just 7. Our final answer then will be the square root of 35 divided by 7. Next up, we're looking for cosine of angle x. This time, I put a reference chart in the right-hand corner. If you look carefully at this right triangle, you may notice that it is a 30-60-90 triangle. Notice that the hypotenuse is twice the length of the shorter side. The longer leg is also the shorter leg times the square root of 3. That means that angle x is 60 degrees across from the longer leg, and angle W is 30 degrees across from the shorter leg. So what we're really finding here is the exact value of cosine of 60 degrees. All 30, 60, 90 right triangles are either congruent or similar. So we could use the given triangle to find this value, or we could just use the reference chart. Either way, we're going to get the same answer. Cosine of x will be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. That'll be 4 over 8, which simplifies to 1 half. Next, we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle. How did I know? Well, 5 times the square root of 3 measures the longer side, and the hypotenuse is 10, which is 2 times 5. Notice that the hypotenuse is 2 times the shorter side, so the shorter side, or x in this case, must be 5. Again, the shorter side is across from the 30 degree angle, and the longer leg is across from the 60 degree angle. That means that angle F is 60 degrees. What we're looking for, once again, is cosine of 60 degrees. As I mentioned before, all 30, 60, 90 right triangles are either congruent or similar, meaning we can use the triangle itself with the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, 5 over 10, which is 1 half, or we can use the reference chart. 